Hey y'all, it's Belle. This is gonna be part one of my possibility October pile <laughs> for spooky Halloween fall time feel reads. There's a lot, so there's gonna probably be more in one video because I just, I did narrow it down a lot. I did have six stacks and it's like, no, I can't do that. <laughs> so it's still a lot, but I wanted to show y'all as much as I could. First, I wanna start with the sequels that I'm gonna read which I've mentioned um, in some other videos, so I'm not gonna talk too much about them, but the third book might be the final too, I'm not sure, in the Shadow School series by J.A. White. I'm gonna read that very soon. Second book in No Place for Monsters by Corey Merritt, School for Phantoms. Read that. Second book of Aveline Jones by Phil Hicks, The Bewitching of Aveline Jones. Fourth book on Adventures on Trains series, Danger at Dead Man's Passed by M.G. Leonard and Sam Sedgman. Shadowgast by Thomas Taylor, the next book in the Eerie on the Sea series. The next book in the Aggie Morton series, mystery series, The Dead Man in the Garden by Martha Jocelyn. So excited. Now that we've got the sequels out of the way, I'll start in with my possibility pile. Toby and the Silver-Blooded Witches by Sally Doherty. 12-year-old Toby has little time for his friends or football since his mom fell ill. All he wants is to stay at home and keep an eye on her. But mysterious things are happening beyond his garden hedge. And who was the strange woman in his attic with her clumsy magic and bothersome bat? Entangled in adventure, Toby must embark on a dangerous mission. A girl's life is at stake and time is running out. That just sounds like a great story and I can't wait. This next book's uh, I mentioned in a recent book haul, so I don't want to go too much more in depth about it. The Ash House by Ankarid Walker. So I'm so excited for this one and everybody on my Instagram was really excited about this one too. So I can't wait. The List of Unspeakable Fears. By J. Casper Kramer. Very excited for that one. What Lives in the Woods by Lindsay Curry. Cannot wait to read another book by her. And the Thirteenth Cat Thriller by Mary Downing Hahn. Excited to finally read something by her. The Dollhouse, A Ghost Story by Cheris Cotter. It just sounds so great. Beasts and Beauty. Dangerous Tales by Soman Shinani. And thank you, HarperCollins. So we have The Hungry Ghost by Miguel Flores. Witches have been banned from Eric for years, which is why Millie has tried to ignore the tingling light that appears in her palm anytime she conjures up a wish. She has too many responsibilities as the oldest girl at St. George's home for wayward girls to get caught up in magics. Sweet Kirky Scylla, though, has always longed for that power, even if it could be dangerous for her. Millie has always kept an eye out for her, but then, in case of a mistaken identity, Scylla is kidnapped by an angry, exiled witch who believes she's the one with the magics, not Millie. Desperate to bring Scylla back to St. George's, Millie sets out to find her with a sarcastic young wind stuck in the form of a cat as her companion. Along the way, they meet an independent young broomstick and a gentle giant, and a whole world Millie has never seen before. As she searches high and low for Scylla, one thing comes clear. She'll have to face the stirrings of forbidden magics inside herself in order to rescue the friend who has become more like a sister. So great friendship, great adventure, a gentle giant, a young broomstick, a cat companion. <laughs> It just sounds great. I'm excited for this. We have The Last Wind Witch by Jennifer Adam. And I've had so many people tell me how great this is, especially other authors have commented. Many years ago, there was a powerful wind witch who wove the seasons, keeping the land bountiful and the people happy. But then a dark magic drove her from the realm and the world fell into chaos. But this just sounds so great and I am so excited. Escape to Witch City by E. Latimer. Emmeline Black has a secret. She can hear the rhythm of heartbeats, not just her own, but others too. It's, someone, it's something she's learned to control, and that can only mean one thing. Emma's a witch. But in a world where a sentence of witchcraft comes with dire consequences, and all children who have reached the age of 13 are tested to ensure they have no witch blood, Emma must attempt to stamp out her power altogether before her own test comes. But a chance discovery leads her to suspect that she's not the only one in the family with secrets. Her radically anti-witch aunt and mother are hiding something, or someone, and they'll stop at nothing to prevent Emma from finding out, even if it costs Emma her life. So that just sounds so intriguing. Yeah, miraculous by Jess Redmond. 11 year old Wonder Ellis is a miraculologist. In a journal he calls the miraculous, he records stories of the unexplainable and extraordinary, and he believes every single one. But when his newborn sister dies at only eight days old, Wonder gets rid of the miraculous. He stops believing. Then he meets Faye, a cape wearing outspoken girl who, with losses of her own. Together they find an abandoned house by the cemetery and a mysterious old woman who just might be a witch. The old woman asks for their help. She asks them to go through graveyards and forests to town halls and police stations by bicycles and by train. She asked them to believe, and so they begin a journey that leads to friendship, to adventure, to healing, and to miracles. I'm excited to read this. 
So we have The Nightmare Thief by Nicole Lesperance. The door swung open again and a tall woman strode in. Her dark hair swirled behind her and she wore a slash of deep plum lipstick. How may I help you? asked Lystra. The woman's mouth stretched into an oily grin. Give me a dozen of your worst nightmares. A girl, a dream shop, and a nightmare thief determined to get revenge. So excited for this one. I can't wait to finally get to it. And since I have all here, I'm gonna put these together. This is a separate duology. Even the cover covers are just so creepy. Our Shadow Weaver, duology by Marcy Kate Connolly. I think in the spooky recommendations video of books I've read is where I put those books of, of Monstrous, that duology, and how even though that ended sad, I fell in love with the author's writing. Well, this is the same author. And I've been assured that these, I won't have any sad things happen, so I'm excited. Then this duology, I think the second book comes out on October 5th, so I'm excited for that. So Shadow Weaver says the shadows that surround us aren't always as they seem. Emily has grown up with a gift. Since she was a baby, she has been able to control shadows. And her only friend and companion is her own shadow, Dar. Disaster strikes when a noble visits their home and offers to cure Emily of magic. Dar promises to change the noble's mind if Emily will help her become flesh as she once was. Emily agrees, and the next morning the man is found in a coma. Frightened, Emily and Dar flee. With the noble's guards on her trail, Emmeline's only hope of clearing her name is to escape capture and perform the ritual that will set Dar free. But Emmeline's not entirely sure she can trust Dar anymore, and it's hard to keep secrets from someone tethered to your feet. So those just sounds so great, and I can't wait to get to them. And the next one is Hollow Dolls. Body Walking. The ability to take control of another person's body and silence the mind inside. No talent, no talent terrifies me more. The bot body walker is on the loose. This, will she find the darkness before it finds her? How can you keep secrets when someone Someone's inside your mind. All I need to know. <laughs> this sounds so great. They changed the cover for the second one. I don't know if it's the same illustrator, but it's not the same style at all. The style for the second book matches the paperback of this. So I don't know what happened with that. That always irritates me, but because I really like this. It's just so beautiful. But I'm excited to read those and then dive into this. A Thieves of Weirdwood. This is the first book. by Christian McKay Heidecker. Twelve-year-old thieves Arthur and Wally are determined to steal their way up the ranks of notorious Black Feathers gang. With lone sharks chasing after Arthur's father and Wally's brother Hospital Bill do, they're in need of serious cash fast. When Arthur spots some wealthy strangers exiting a seemingly deserted mansion, he smells an opportunity for a big score. Little do the boys realize they've stumbled upon Weirdwood Manor, the headquarters of a magical order who protect the balance between the real and imaginary worlds. When Kingsport is besieged by nightmarish creatures, it's up to these young thieves to save their city. I cannot wait. So we have The Edge of Strange Hollow by Gabrielle K. Byrne. Welcome to Strange Hollow. Beware of the Grimwood. Poppy Sunshine isn't like everyone else in Strange Hollow. She's not afraid of the Grimwood, home to magical creatures like shapeshifters, fairies, witches, and even a three-headed dog. Banned from the wood by her parents, Poppy longs to learn everything about it and imagines joining her mother and father as they hunt the forest cursed magical objects. So when her only family disappears on a routine expedition, she and her friends must break every rule to save them. But Poppy soon discovers that things in the grim, grim wood are rarely what they seem, and the monsters who took her parents may not be monsters at all. We have the Cabinet of Earth duology by Anne Nesbitt. All the books I've read by her, I have loved so much. On their first day in Paris, Maya and her little brother James find themselves caught up in some very old magic. Houses with bronze salamanders for door handles, statues that look too much like Maya's own worried face, a man wearing sunglasses to hide his radiant purple eyes. Nothing is what it seems. I've had these for so long and I cannot wait to finally get to them. And we have Witch Girl, Jan Eldridge. Evangeline Clement spends her days learning the ways of, of magic from her witch grandmother. When they are called to a creepy old mansion to solve an unusual case, Evangeline encounters an enemy unlike any of the terrifying monsters she has faced before and a secret about her own family that will shake her to the tips of her silver toed boots. Beware, this is a story to read with the lights on. I can't wait for that. We have The Secrets of the Valhalla. Jasmine Richards. Into a world of myth and magic. It's not every day that you find famous weather woman bound to a magic tree deep in the woods, or discover that the weather woman is in fact Suna, the Norse goddess of the sun, and one of the seven day guardians who keep time in order. But that's exactly what happens to Buzz and his new friend Mary. They quickly realize that with Suna captured by the Norse god Loki, the world is doomed to repeat the same Saturday forever. Now Buzz and Mary will have to embark on a quest through many mythologies to find the mag magical runes of Valhalla and rescue the day guardians before Loki plunges the world into chaos for good. Those just sound really great. 
So we have Mysteries of the Night Watchers by A.M. Howell. I absolutely love The Garden of Lost Secrets and The House of a Hundred Clocks by this author. So I cannot wait to read this. May 1910. As the blazing Haley's Comet draws close to Earth, Nancy is uprooted to start a new life in Suffolk with a grandfather she has never met. With every curtain drawn shut, Nancy is forbidden from leaving her grandfather's house. No one must know that she is there. Yet when Nancy discovers the house observatory, she watches her mother and grandfather secretly creep out every night. Where are they going and why? As the mysteries pile up, Nancy must bring dark secrets from the past to light, even if doing so will put her own life at risk. So I'm excited for that. And we have Song of the Far Isle by Nicholas Bowling. As Orin's home is on the far isle of Little Drum where everyone lives and breathes music. When their way of life is stopped by an order of silence from the ruling Red Duchess, it is Orin who must go in search of the island's last hope. A mythical instrument made of whalebone with the power to change hearts and minds. So excited for this one. I don't know if an October possibility read gets more, per more perfect than October, October. <laughs> this is by Katya Balin. October and her dad live in the woods and they are wild. They only need the trees and the lake and the stars and each other. And until the year October turns 11, then everything changes. It definitely has all the feels of the season. Next we have Long Lost by Jacqueline West. They would share the lie half and half. They would keep yet another secret safely between them. One of them the lock and one of them the key. Once there were two sisters who did everything together, but only one of them disappeared. So intrigued, I cannot wait. We have the Elizabeth Webster series. And the third book comes out in October, I believe. And these are by William Lashner. It says, the ghost repeated herself three times. After a startled moment, I realized what she was saying. Save me, save him, save me, save him, save me, save him. So I cannot wait to dive into these finally. We have Ghost Girl by Ali Malininko. And J.A. White, who wrote Night Books, blurbed it saying, spine chilling. Zee Pluckett loves ghost stories. She ne just never expected to be living one. It all starts with a dark and stormy night. When the sky is clear, everything is different. People are missing. There's a creepy new principal who seems to know everyone's darkest dreams. And Z is seeing frightening things, large scary dogs that talk, and maybe even a ghost. When she tells her classmates, only her best friend Eli Elijah believes her. Worse, mean girl Nellie gives Z a cruel nickname, Ghost Girl. But whatever the storm washed up isn't going away. Everyone's most selfish wishes are start coming true in creepy ways. All three of them, Z, Elijah, and Nellie, will have to work together if they're going to give their ghost story a happy ending. So excited. We have 13 Witches, book one, The Memory Thief by Jody Lynn Anderson. A weapon is as much a part of a witch hunter as her fingernails are her teeth. It is tied right to her heart and that's where she keeps it close. The secret of it is passed on from mother to daughter, a gift of magic and material combined, an embroidered dress for a shield, a sword, mel a sword made of song, a net nip from poetry. So that sounds great. We have Spirit Hunters. By Ellen Ho. Harper Rain doesn't like her new house from the moment she steps inside. It makes her skin crawl and her hair stand on end. There's an energy to the house that just doesn't feel right. There are rumors that the Rain family's new house is haunted. Unexplainable events and tragedy seem to have befallen every family who's ever lived there. Harper isn't sure she believes those rumors until her younger brother, Michael, starts acting strangely. The whole atmosphere gives Harper a sense of deja vu, but she can't remember why. Harper knows that the memory she's blocking will help make sense of her brother's behavior and the strange and dangerous sensations she feels in this house, but we should be able to put the pieces together in time. Another one I've had forever and I cannot wait to get to. And we have Root Magic by Eden Royce. I am so excited for this one. It just sounds so great. It's 1963 and things are changing for Jezebel Turner. Her beloved grandmother has just passed away. The local police deputy won't stop harassing her family. With school integration arriving in South Carolina, Jez and her twin brother Jay are about to begin the school year with a bunch of new kids. But the biggest change comes when Jez and Jay turn 11, and their uncle Doc tells them he's going to train them in root work. Jez and Jay have always been fascinated by the African-American folk magic that has been the legacy of their family for generations, especially the curious potions and powders Doc and Graham would make for the people on their island. But Jez soon finds out that her family's true powers go as far beyond small charms and elixirs, and not a moment too soon, because when evil, both natural and supernatural, comes to show itself in town, it's going to take every bit of the magic she has inside to see her through. So that sounds really powerful and I think it's going to be a great read. We have The Explorer's Code. This is by Allison Kane Hymas. Charlie, Anna, and Emily have only three days to solve the mysteries of Idlewood Manor, or its secrets will be lost forever. So this just sounds like a spooky mystery with a great group of friends, maybe. So excited for that. We have Baylor's Guide to Dreadful Dreams. Technology. By Robert Enfield. 
Meet Baylor Bosco. He's a pretty typical 13 year old, except for the fact that he can, you know, talk to dead people. So I'm already, that's all I need to know. <laughs> Sounds perfect already. Looks like he's running, like she's not as solid as him, like it's a ghost. We have the Turnkey of Highgate Cemetery by Allison Rushby. 12 year old ghost, Flossie Birdwhistle is the turnkey at London's Highgate Cemetery where she cares for all the buried souls and keeps them at rest. During the Blitz bombings of World War II, even the dead are unsettled, and Flossie encounters the ghost of a German soldier spying amongst the wreckage. What is the magical object he, ca he carries, and how is he moving between wartime worlds of the living and the dead? A sinister supernatural plot is afoot, and courageous Flossie must fight for her cemetery and her country. That just sounds amazing. Then we have Hushabai by Jody Lee Mott. This Hushabai is a doll that seems to possess extraordinary powers, but will it use them for good or evil? Creepy doll. <laughs> so excited for that. We have The Halloween Moon by Joseph Fink. So this sounds like the perfect Halloween book. Esther Gold loves Halloween more than anything in the world, so she is determined to go trick-or-treating again this year, even if her parents think she is officially too old. Esther has it all planned out from her costume to her candy collecting strategy. But when the night rolls around, something feels off. No one is answering their door. The moon is an unnatural shade of orange. Strange, strange children roam the streets wearing creepy costumes that might not be costumes at all. And it seems like the only people besides Esther who are awake to see it all are her best friend, her school bully, and her grown up next door neighbor. Together, this unlikely crew must find a way to lift the curse that has been placed upon their small town before it's too late because someone is out to make sure Halloween never comes to an end. And even Esther doesn't want to be trapped in this night forever. Yeah, even as much as I love Halloween and Christmas, it just loses its how special it is if you have it every single day. There's nothing to look forward to and everything gets old after a while. So that sounds great. I forgot to mention these when I was mentioning the video with the book haul because I think I'd hauled the second book that just came out. I won't go on too much about them, but they're by Alice Marshall. A town, the town is cursed, the clock is ticking, and they're next. Every 13 years in the town of Eden Eld, three 13 year olds disappear. Cannot wait to get to that duology. I don't know if there will be more, but right now there's two out. And then recently, the second book came out for this one. This town is not all right. The M.K. Cries. Deacon McCullough knows Driftwood Harbor is not a normal town. The kids are too well behaved. Things seem to disappear in the harbor waters. And something is definitely wrong with his twin sister. Something is wrong with this town. So this just sounds like a creepy like type mystery. To find out what's going on. So I think I'll end that one here. That was a lot of um, standalones or first in a series that are, that's all that's out right now and some duologies or there's only two out in the series right now. So I got all the two book ones out of the way. So the next video will be a few more standalones. And if I can fit the series that I want to read in there, I will. I did narrow it down a lot if I know it's hard to believe. And I haven't even looked at, I picked these all, all these books out that I wanted to read a couple months ago. I have, and I never even looked properly on my shelves. I know there's still more in there. I just really love spooky middle grade. <laughs> so there's always a ton, which I mean, I love it. So I read it all year round, but I just want to give y'all as many options as possible. I'm excited for all of these books and there's no way I can read them all in a month, but here's hoping I can get to a lot of them. I hope y'all enjoyed this and that y'all stick around and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.